Hey guys, my name's Will. This is my first YouTube video. It's really strange just talking into a cell phone, um, especially when you're in a house all by yourself. Uh, maybe I'll get used to it. But I'm doing this video because I've had a lot of problems setting up a home studio, probably because I'm using a bunch of mismatched crap that I've picked up here and there. I don't have a lot of money. I've found a lot of things in various places that are not really supposed to be compatible with each other, but I've made them compatible. I wanted to do this video because I'm pretty sure that um, experience has shown that when I do research for problems that I'm having, I find very limited um, videos on people that have had similar experiences so I'm sure that there's gonna be something in here that somebody will see and they will say you know I'm having that problem too luckily because it feels like I've been doing this for years now I don't know how long I've actually been doing this um, troubleshooting but um, I've got this setup working now and uh, I'm gonna get into that and show you a little bit about what I have um, and what I'm using and you know why it works okay this is my setup and don't kill me because I'm not technical okay this is a Yamaha PSR 170 it's very crappy okay this is something I got at Goodwill for ten dollars I only use it to send and receive MIDI messages. And this is a Casio CZ3000 synthesizer. It's about 30 years old and it works. So you can um, set your own presets, um, 32 of them, or you can use the 32 presets that come with the synthesizer. This is a Ax an Axiom M Audio USB powered MIDI controller, MIDI keyboard. It does have the pads on it and they are touch sensitive um, and it has the knobs, the knobs I use to control my mini iPad. Um, I have several synthesizer apps on there and um, you can control the Animoog, you can control the BS16i which is what's on there now um, there are many, many synthesizers on iOS that um, they're really, really worth the money. Um, I have an MPC-1000. This was the most expensive piece of equipment that I have. I've had it for a couple years. Um, I could not afford the monitor upgrade. Um, the screen, you know, there's an upgrade for the screen. And basically... When you buy an MPC-1000, um, most of the lower-end MPCs, they have a screen that is flat like the pads are. So in order to make it easier, um, I took it apart and um, I pulled the whole screen out and I built this little border and propped it up so that it's facing you rather than laying down which means you have to hover over it to see it properly, which has been a big help. Um, this Lenovo laptop I got off Craigslist also. Um, that and the iPad I got from the same guy for a couple hundred bucks. And I'm running Podium Free. Um, I upgraded Podium Free, so it actually wasn't free, but that's what the program is called. Um, I paid $50 for the upgrade because uh, high-end DAWs are very expensive and I'm cheap. Um, I also am a single dad, so um, taking care of a 12-year-old girl in 7th grade isn't the uh, cheapest. Plus, when you're in a long-distance relationship and you're driving back and forth uh, several hundred miles every couple weeks, it, uh, it costs a lot of money, so I have to spend my money very wisely. I have this really beat-up, crappy mixer. It's a Radio Shack, and trust me when I tell you, if you're new at the production um, of music that all mixers are not created equal. I thought any mixer will do. 
Um, it works, but you know, I spent a hundred bucks on it um, from Radio Shack, and I could have put that money to much better use. This is an Acer Aspire desktop computer. This I also have Podium Free on it. This side of it I use only to record audio. I don't use it for MIDI. So, okay, so I'm gonna try to explain this the best way I can with my very limited technical knowledge. So, the USB MIDI keyboard controller. When I hit a key, it's going from the keyboard line here into my laptop. Okay, but I also have a USB to MIDI cable going out from the, the laptop into the back of my MPC here. This is channel, uh, sorry, this is in one, in two, out A, out B. I have the laptop coming in here on in two. So it goes in from here and then out here. So two B. So when I push the key, it's receiving a signal and sending a signal. It's sending it on channel one. USB 2.0 MIDI 101. Okay, this program allows you to send and receive, so it's receiving it and sending it. When it goes out from the laptop into the MPC, it goes from the MPC back to the laptop. That actually allows you to record on your MPC whatever you're playing on your USB controller. Anybody that uh, owns an MPC 1000 knows that there are no USB ins um, on an MPC 1000. So you cannot hook up a USB powered keyboard directly to your MPC. Um, I th don't know if there's anybody else that's doing this. I'm sure there is. I couldn't find any videos on uh, how to work it, so I had to figure it out. So these USB MIDI connections are back here. I have two of them. One of them is going to my iPad through the camera connection kit, which is here. It's just this part, this here. And then um, the other USB MIDI connection is going into the laptop. This is what one looks like. MIDI, USB. Pretty basic, you can find them on Amazon. They're like five bucks. I got a couple of them. I've got three of them because um, they just come in handy. So back to um, channel one. So channel one is going to play channel one. Now with this setup, all I have to do, this button right here controls the track. See TR, if you can see it properly, TR plus, it means track up. So if I go up one track, I have it set up so that when I go up one track, it goes up one channel. So each channel I have assigned to a different track. So now it's on channel two, which now I should get a MIDI message on channel two. Okay. Now I have loaded in there the Mini Moog VA. Um, I have them set up probably in six or seven different channels, the same 
VST plugin because you can adjust um, each plugin to sound differently so that you have essentially six or seven different instruments. And this is the only way I've been able to find that you can actually record um, record onto the MPC MIDI messages and play them through your laptops from your USB controller. So and then if I take it off record, it just continues to play. Okay, so now the other way that I have this routed is everything is going through the mixer into the MPC, MPC's audio, out from the MPC's audio into the desktop. And the desktop will record the audio here. Um, that is so I can play all of these instruments here all at the same time and record them all live in real time. Um, I find it more, I don't know, it just feels more authentic when I'm trying to play music um, all at the same time rather than trying to stop what I'm doing, change instruments, and keep on going. So back to the the routing. Now if I, you can see here I'm on track 10 and if I go to track 11 it's input, uh, output 3 B, MIDI 3 B. So if I go down to 10 it goes to 2, 9 to 1 B and now I'm in the A mode. Um, MIDI A output. So this is track 8 and then I'm gonna go down to 1. Now the A output is a MIDI cable like I said earlier which is here 1 A. This is 2 B. 1 A is going to the iPad. So now that I have selected 1A here, it should trigger my iPad once I press the key. Okay. That's great. Now I can go ahead and hit record now. It will trigger the laptop from the previous recording, and now I can add. And it'll keep going. Yeah, it's annoying, 